In the forests of Madagascar, there's a new sound. The sound of men working. Poor men who want to get rich. They're here because of sapphires. This is the biggest rush in Madagascar for more than 20 years. Tens of thousands of people have moved here to clear the land and dig for gems. Once virgin rainforest felled and burned. Now, look, mine shafts and spoil heaps stretch across the valley. Meet Bruno and his sapphires. He's travelled a thousand miles, invested all his money for this. Each morning, the work takes him down into the dark. The pits are deep, very deep. The job is cramped, backbreaking, and dangerous. Yeah, if three months, I'm going to fucking sit it. The, na ita sa fira zan zawa. If an chanda katam tiza vovak tu renti den chanda katato na ita sa fira zan zawa fam bulas de mampu de na bulas ma zom na miliara zan. The am zo zan bulam chanda kan zan e miliara zan zan zom zom bulam ang fan ente nak vasamba wazgo na sita puntu. In this, one of the poorest countries on earth, that's the dream that keeps them coming. Men desperate to feed their families. They dig deep to expose a seam of rock. Keen eyes search for gems. A hope of wealth in every handful. The mines are illegal, but the work goes on unchecked, eating slowly into the rainforest. See the damage it causes threatening the habitat of one of the world's rarest animals, the Indri lemur. Can you hear that? That's the sound of Indri singing. They're on that side of the valley, and they're singing across to the Indri this side. They're known as Babakoto here. They're critically endangered, and they only live in a very small area of Madagascar. They can't survive in captivity, so when they're gone from here, they're gone for good. They spend their lives in the trees, eating leaves and fruit, and breeding only once every three years. There may be as few as 2,000 left in the wild. Jonah Radzimbazafi is a world authority on the Indri. He's horrified by the effects of the mining. Thousands of people. The Indri needs the trees for food, for the sleeping site, but when the sunfire go there, they cut down the trees and they destroy and the injury disappears. So today I'm telling you, stop buying, stop buying precious stones from illegal mining from Madagascar. But how can buyers know the gems go from mine to capital city, are cut and polished in backstreet workshops before being exported to dealers abroad. Illegally mined sapphires are then anonymous and completely untraceable. So for now, the miners keep working. Great riches lie beneath this soil, unique wildlife in the trees above. But how does Madagascar extract one without destroying the other. Angus Crawford, BBC News, Madagascar.